Good evening, and welcome to Films in the Park. I'm Sheldon Renan, here to say a few words about the second film in the series, the 1967 crime action thriller, John Borman's Point Blank, starring Lee Marvin. This is a great, fun action film. I call it fun. But when it came out, it shocked and dismayed most of the critics in America who dismissed it because of what they called ultraviolence. The movie is better than the book. In fact, I went to see it the day it opened in the theater it premiered, the North Point Theater in San Francisco. I went back to see it that night. The next night, I took my wife to see it. And later in the week, I took a bunch of film lover friends to see it. And it wasn't just me. There were a lot of us that were intrigued by this film, that couldn't forget the film. Because it was so, it got under your skin. It was so visually exciting, so rich. It had such velocity. The story arc was both clear and yet puzzling. You have to remember 1967. I, was just finishing my first history of experimental films. I was starting the Pacific Film Archive. It was the time, still the time of the hippies, which you see in the film. It was still the time of anti-war protest. It was still the time of uh, kind of the breakdown, first really deep breakdown between the population and the people who were governing the country. And yet this film, while acknowledging that stuff, is very old school. It's about values that are disappearing. But strangely enough, the values are brought to life for us by a professional criminal who has no morals. But he does have a sense of justice. When you see a film that turns out to be this good, you always have to wonder, how did this film get to be such a great film? Why is this film a film that when you see it, you can't forget it? And usually you try and look at the people who were involved in it because there's always a power struggle inside a film as, as to who's going to control the film, what it's going to look like, how it's going to get finished. In this case, this film is a result of just two people, the director John Borman and the actor Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin had the power, the juice at the time, because he had won the Academy Award, much to his surprise, for Cat Ballou. And now he had the right to green light films, to say, if I'm in this film, yes, this film will be made, and then when he was in the film to say who he trusted in the film. And the person he trusted was John Borman. They became pals, and that was a friendship that lasted for the rest of Lee Marvin's life. And every time somebody would try and say to John Borman, you're not doing this right, or why are you taking so long to do it, Lee Marvin would step in and say, leave the kid alone. Let him do his work. And at least one case, he said, do you need more time to John Borman privately? And Borman said, I need time to figure the shot out. And Marvin said, take as much time as you need. And he went back and pretended, I think, that he had a hangover or something like that. The point is that it was a film that the two of them made together. There's a saying in Hollywood that if it isn't on the page, it isn't on the screen. But that isn't totally true, because what's usually in a script are words, and what's usually in a movie are images. And it's the images in point blank which haunt you year after year, decade after decade. There were lots of people who, who contributed to this film in a major way. Philip Lathrop was a great director of photography, a man who was uncredited, the camera operator on uh, Touch of Evil, Orson Welles' film, 10 years earlier, and had become a major cinematographer in Hollywood. Albert Brenner, the art director, probably one of the best art directors in Hollywood, did a lot of films things like Goodbye Girls, but in this case created a look that was totally unsentimental, hard-edged. L.A. like L.A. looks. Doesn't look like San Francisco, and it sure doesn't look like Oregon. And it still looks like that today. All eight angles and edges and um, shiny materials and uh, with very little heart underneath. But the real thing is that this was a, a work a partnership between John Borman and Lee Marvin. Lee Marv John Borman considers it an internal portrait, an internal portrait of Lee Marvin, what he was really like, and the, and, the, and the relationship he had, difficult relationship he had with violence as a result of 
what he saw, what he experienced, and how he was injured in World War II. One of the things that's unusual in the film is the enormous sense of force that Marvin brings to the screen, the velocity with which he moves through things, and that was present on the set as well as on the screen. In one case, he hit John Vernon, one of the uh, actors, so hard that they had to stop filming because Vernon broke into tears. But in the end, you know, this is just a great film to watch and to look at again. So now, point blank. <laughs>